It seems today there are constant news stories of grand new space missions capable of making great discoveries that will change the way we see the universe. These proposed space missions often take years of planning, preparation and execution, and are often capitalised by the media. Space missions attract a lot of attention, but it's not uncommon to hear a proposed mission years in advance be altered or cancelled. That being said, we have seen remarkable achievements made by NASA, JAXA, ESA, China, and private space companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin. But there is one country and space agency who are changing the game. This is India. It's a country with over 1.3 billion people, the second largest country by population in the world, and it's expected to overtake China in the coming decades. But its population isn't the only thing on the rise. India's first satellite, Aryabhata, was launched by the Soviet Union in April 1975, and for 33 years its space industry remained rather stagnant. Until recently. All space missions are directed by the government's Indian Space Research Organization, whose vision is to harness space technology for national development while pursuing space science research and planetary exploration. In October 2008, their lunar orbiter Chandrayaan-1 was launched and discovered the presence of water ice. In November 2013, their Mars orbiter mission was carried out, which successfully entered Mars orbit in September 2014. At a cost of just $74 million, they were able to send the orbiter with five scientific instruments that still continue to monitor conditions on Mars to this day. And unlike all three agencies before them, they did it on their first attempt. February 2017 saw ISRO launch 104 satellites on a single rocket, setting a world record. They did this on their Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, which carried 1300 kilograms of payload into space. It successfully deployed all 104 satellites from seven different countries, sending them on the right paths while it travelled at 27,000 km per hour. To put it into perspective, ISRO's budget in 2018 was set at only $1.7 billion, compared to NASA's $20.7 billion. India now has plans to launch a second mission to the moon, followed by a manned spaceflight in the coming years. Chandrayaan-2 is India's second lunar exploration mission after Chandrayaan-1, scheduled to be launched in April 2019, although this mission has been rescheduled multiple times since 2018. As of February 2018, the mission has an allocated cost of approximately $125 million. The mission is planned to fly on a geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark III. It's a three-stage medium lift launch vehicle, measuring around 44 meters in height, and a cost per launch of between 46 to 62 million in 2017. As a comparison, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy has two stages, measures around 70 meters, and has a cost per launch of 90 million. Once in space, the orbiter will orbit the moon at an altitude of 100 kilometers, with a high-resolution camera to conduct high-resolution observations of the landing site. The mission's lander is called Vikram, named after Vikram Sarabhai who is widely regarded as the father of the Indian space program. It will detach from the orbiter and descend to a lower lunar orbit before attempting to land on the lunar surface. The lander's propulsion system consists of eight thrusters for altitude control and five liquid main engines. With the lander safely on the surface, a six-wheeled rover will be deployed, operated on solar power. The rover will perform on-site chemical analysis and send the data to the orbiter above, which will relay it back to Earth. A total of 10 electric motors will be used for traction and steering, accompanied by kinetic traction control which will enable the rover to navigate the rough lunar terrain. The landing site is a high plane between two craters, Manzanus and Sympelius, at a latitude of about 70 degrees south. If successful, Chandrayaan-2 will be the first ever mission to land a rover near the lunar south pole. This mission will use and test various new technologies and conduct new experiments. ISRO stated, the payloads will collect scientific information on lunar topography, mineralogy, elemental abundance, lunar exosphere, and signatures of hydroxyl and water ice, which will provide more data after the information collected 50 years ago by the human Apollo missions. ISRO plans to use the experience for more challenging missions in the future, such as touching down on an asteroid or Mars, or sending a spacecraft to Venus. 
Since 2004, when ISRO first prepared a plan for human spaceflight, the agency has been developing technologies that are building blocks for such a mission. The first crewed flight is planned with a spacecraft called Gaganyan for December 2021 on a homegrown GSLV-3 rocket. The most crucial objective is that of a crew module, a capsule that can carry humans. ISRO have successfully demonstrated this by having a prototype re-enter the Earth's atmosphere withstanding the thermal heat caused by friction, but there is still more tests and development to be done. ISRO will also be conducting test flights for a new and improved rocket, the SSLV, or Small Satellite Launch Vehicle, set for summer this year. As the name implies, the SSLV will launch smaller satellites that weigh between 500 to 700 kilograms. At just 34 meters tall, the rocket has four stages, with a payload capacity of 500 kilograms to low Earth orbit. What will make these vehicles so special is their low cost being one tenth the cost of a PSLV. SSLV does not require a mission control center to launch the satellite. It can be launched from some personal computer anywhere assembled for launch within 72 hours. India's economic approach to spaceflight and its constant changes and innovations are likely to bring many benefits to the future of space travel, and will remain a key competitor in the space industry for many years to come. A special thanks to our patrons Shara Ogilvy and Jimmy Alexander for supporting the creation of this video. Thanks again for watching.